Hello, devotioners. How are you today? I hope that you're doing splendid. I hope that you're doing well. I just want to stop by just to share with you in a time of devotion um, and just to check in with you to see how you are doing. God is certainly so good. He's so faithful. And he's so kind <clears throat> to us. Don't mind me. <laughs> um, just outside here um, near the garden and um, just wanted to sit in nature. I am, many of you know me, I'm just becoming just a lover of nature and all that it has to offer. It has taught me so much about God. It has opened up my, my eyes and my, even my senses to just the awesomeness of God. And so much lessons um, are embedded in nature. So many things that God uh, will teach us through nature. And so I enjoy just sitting out and um, basking in it and looking at the, um, the raspberry tree over there and seeing the bees um, uh, doing, their, doing their work. It looks so simplistic. Um, but they're but they're over there gathering nectar and they're gonna bring that back to the colony and you know they're gonna uh, do their honey stuff they're gonna make their honey and all these wonderful things and while they're while they're doing that they're they're gonna be flying away and they're gonna be dropping seeds in the earth and uh, somewhere um, in the neighborhood another raspberry tree is gonna is gonna pop up um, and you would wonder who planted it was it man who planted it no it was the be who dropped a seed along the way so I mean it's just fascinating um, just just the things that nature will teach you and the things that God does through the tiniest of, of, um, of being um, it's 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 incredible and so I'm just out here today um, just uh, and I'm in my green my green as well <laughs> didn't plant it but just so wonderful to be outside um, in the sun and uh, put your sunscreen on put your sunscreen on and uh, just to just to um, just to sit in, in in oneness with with God and to share with you um, I want to talk to you today um, about being bold in your faith and be being bold in your faith and I think while I'm encouraging you I am going to be encouraging myself as well because um, I need I need to be emboldened um, in my faith and in my walk and in my pursuit. So I guess you're going to hear some passion because I too want to be encouraged as well as I navigate uh, this, this, this next chapter. And I hope that you're encouraged. I want to take you today to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 22. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 22 and while you're finding that I really hope that you are enjoying the the remaining days of the summer I mean summer is almost over I mean for many of us who live on this side you felt like it was over because it was so cold uh for many days the other day um but you know you know how the weather is it changes and um, but we know that we serve a God who never changes so um I hope that you're enjoying the the remaining days of summer and trying to get some some time in you perhaps weren't able to travel but um you know get some some um uh, day trips in and um, you know and more importantly get some time of, of, of to, to be in solitude where you can begin to recalibrate your mind and to begin to set some goals and to um, <clears throat> to to launch out further into the deep if that's where you are on your journey and just to really uh, bring in everything that God has for you as we close out this year believe it or not we're going to close this year out in no time and before you close your eyes and open it it's going to be 2025 unreal but anyway let's get our bibles to genesis chapter 6 and verse uh, 22 simple the bible says noah did this he did all that god commanded him we're talking about being bold in your faith today noah did this he did all that god commanded him i want to start off with noah today i'm going to be all over the scripture just highlighting people that were just bold in their faith in god and and many of us know the story overhead you're going to hear um 
uh, the uh, the planes but um, let's 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 um, lean in here Noah has not seen rain never heard of rain until God told him that it was going to rain and God ordered him to build an ark and so the Bible said that Noah did all that God commanded him God gave him the measurement God told him what wood to use God told him how many animals were supposed to come into the boat God gave him specific instructions and 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 Noah it wasn't mentioned anywhere where he questioned God where he questioned the sovereignty of God. There's no, there's no place. He just went ahead in his old age. He was old. He went ahead in his old age with his boys and they went into the forest and they began to cut down gopher wood and they began to, to, to cut that thing and to begin to build an ark. He was bold in his faith. There are times in life that God is going to give you instruction and he's not going to He's, he's, he, you're gonna, you're gonna experience things where you're like, oh, I don't know this. This is not familiar to me. This is not familiar territory to me, similar to Noah. But what did Noah do? Noah said, okay, God, if you spoke it, I am going to believe it and I'm gonna, I am gonna take action. And that's what Noah did. Noah did what God commanded him to do. He was bold in his belief. He was bold in his trust. He was bold in his faith in God and God's word. And he built an ark and he was able to save his family and he was able to save the animals God is so good so God is going to ask you to do things that you're not familiar with he's going to ask you to step into territory territories that you're 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 not you're not familiar with but if God speak it you can walk into it you can do it and God will give you specific instructions for you to follow and if you follow them I am telling you you will reap the benefits you will reap the harvest not just you but for those who are attached to you and to those those that eventually will become attached to you generations after generations do what God says to do I want to talk about Nehemiah he was bold in his faith he heard that the walls were broken down he heard that the walls were were, were ruined and he decided listen I can stay in this palace and where everything is at my avail I have favor with the king and so I it doesn't matter what goes on in Israel but he said no I am going to be bold in my faith and the Bible said that he went and the king asked him what can I do for you what can I do for you and he told the king listen I want to go back and build the wall because we know back in those days the walls represent security Yes, when the walls were fortified, the enemy could not come in. And so he, he recognized that, 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 that his people were exposed. They were, they, 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 they were going to be endangered by the enemy because the walls were torn down and, and, and there was no security there. And so I, he said, I want to build the wall. And, and I love what he said here in um, Nehemiah chapter 20 and Nehemiah 2 and verse 20. He said, the God of heaven will make us prosperous prosper and we his servant will rise arise and build but you have no portion or right or claim in Jerusalem he was telling the enemies listen you have no rights here you have no claims here he silenced the naysayer you have to be bold in your faith that when you are going to walk and exercise your faith in God there are going to be people that's going to want to talk you down and belittle you and berate you and tell you what you can or cannot do but Nehemiah said, listen, I have a God who is by my side and God is going to prosper me and God is going to give me the strength and those who are with me to build this war, to, to secure Israel again. So you naysayer, get out of here. Get, I like to say, get out of town. You don't belong here. You're not going to whisper uh, a negativity in my ears. I am doing a good work and I'm not going to come down. And I come to encourage you that sometimes you're going to have to be bold in your voice and begin to speak to the enemy and tell the enemy enough is enough. I am tired of you talking me down and want to talk me under. No, I am going above i am going to arise i am going to do what god has commissioned and commanded me to do he saw it, it he saw it in my heart 
and he's seen me through this and I'm not going to let you talk me down. You have to be bold in your faith, bold in your words. You have to be bold. Noah was bold. He followed strategic instruction and Nehemiah was bold. He spoke to the naysayers. Sometimes you got to talk back to them. Even one time and say, listen, I see what you're doing. I know what you want to do, but you're not going to discourage me. You got to speak to them. I want to talk about, I want to talk about Job this morning. He was bold in his faith. He said, naked I came in this world and naked I will return. I mean, talk about bold faith. A man who had everything. A man who God saw <laughs> and God recommended to suffer. To suffer. And yet, not one time did he curse God. The closest person to him challenged him and told him. And I understand what she was going through. She said, curse God and die. But she said, no. No, I will not curse him. You have to be so bold in your faith that even when the external circumstances mm, are overshadowing everything. Oh God, I feel it. Let me just pause. Because many of you are there right now. When the external circumstances are hollering over you and all you see is their shadow over you and you cannot seem to see the light of day and it would be best for you to just pack up everything and go or prepare to die. But Job was so bold in his faith Job said, listen, I take nothing in and I'm not going to take anything out. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And some of you right now, you're down to nothing. You are down to nothing. You can't see your way out. You can't see your way through. You can't see your way under. You can't see your way over. You just cannot see your way. That's where Job is. He couldn't see his way, but he was bold enough to say the Lord give it and the Lord take it away and he said blessed be the name of the Lord you got to be bold in your faith enough to worship God in the worst of it all oh my God I feel it down to my tippy toes you have to be bold enough in your faith to say you know what I have nothing but I have him I have nothing but I have him I have nothing but I have him and as long as I have him I can bounce back as long as I have him there is hope as long as I have him I know that one day joy will come again as long as I have him. He was bold in his faith to worship God in spite of the boils that were on his body. In spite of, in spite of his friends asking him and questioning him. I mean, you must have done something to have caused this to come upon you. I mean, to have lost your family, to have lost your livestock, to have lost everything. In seconds, in minutes, after a lifetime of wealth, and then all of a sudden everything comes crashing down. He was bold enough in his faith to worship, to still worship, to still worship. Because it's not what you have, it's who you have. It's not what you have, it's who you have. It's not what you have, it's who you have. And he had the Lord of hosts on his side. And we know how the story turned. God turned that situation. God turned that situation and gave him double for his trouble. Many people would say he got double. So worship God. You got to be bold in your faith to worship God when you are down to nothing. When you're down to your last. I want to talk about Ruth today. Oh my God. This girl. I love Ruth. She was bold in her faith. She said, listen. 
I am accustomed to Moab. I know the culture. I know the people. I know I I I I know every town. I I, I listen. I know the blueprint of this place. I know this place. But you know what? I'm gonna have to leave it if I want more. Eka. I'm gonna have to leave this place if I'm ever going to realize the greatness that that lies inside of me. I'm gonna have to leave this place and the. Bible said that she left everything. She left everything that was significant to her. She left her parents. She left her sister. She left her life. She left everything. Sometimes you're going to have to be bold in your faith and make sure this is God. Let me just say this right here. Make sure it's God that is telling you to go. Make sure it's God that's telling you to leave. But she was willing to say, listen. Don't be so quick. Don't be so quick to forsake me from following after you. Because where you go, I'm going to go. Where you lodge, I'm going to lodge. Your people are going to become my people. Your God is going to become my God. And where you die, that's where I'm going to be buried. And, he said, and she said, may the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything, but death parts me from you. She said, listen, I'm leaving everything behind. You got to be bold in your faith many times to put one foot in front of the other and say, listen, a new day is on the horizon. A new day is on the horizon. And I know I've have, I have memories here. I know that everything about my life was here and everybody is accustomed to me being here. Everybody's accustomed to me being in Lodabar. But you know what? I am going to take a leap of faith and I am going to step into the unknown and I am going to align myself with somebody who knows this God of Israel. And I'm going to follow her back to the house of bread. And I don't know what the outcome is. But I'm prepared for what the outcome is. And I am going to pursue this God. And who knows? Who knows what he will be able to accomplish in my life. Sometimes you're going to have to leave everything behind. Sometimes you're going to have to leave everything behind and take a bold step of faith into the unknown. I want to talk about Rahab as well. I mean, this girl, this girl recognized that her family was in jeopardy. She recognized that the land that she was, that she was inhabiting, that any day now, that it was going to be conquered and lives were going to be lost or life was going to be, uh, people were going to be separated if some people were able to escape what was about to come. And she was so tenacious. She was just so confident. She, she exuded uh, uh, something that I would love to grab a hold of. She went into the face of, 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 of those spies and she said, listen, let's make a deal. Let's negotiate something here. And that is exactly what she did. She went ahead and she tried to preserve her future and not just her future future but the lives of her family you got to give her some credit because she could have said listen I see an opportunity I see a way out and I am out of here I am out of here forget who forget who remains I am going to use my skills and I'm going to use my ability and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to use my talents and I'm going to get myself out of here but she did not you have to be bold enough to extend a hand to others and not be afraid of being diminished. Not be afraid of your light to go out because you're going to help other people. Mm -mm, no, you got to be bold enough to know that. Listen, 
I got what I got, but I also see what you have. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you to arise. I'm going to help you to get out of this place of doom and, and death. I'm going to help you to get out of this place. And who knows what will become of your, of your life. You have to be bold enough. I love her. I love her story. I love, I love her ability to not to just think of herself but to think of others in a time when she could have when she could have kept the focus on herself because she wasn't known for anything good she wasn't known for anything good she could have said yeah y'all belittle me all these years and now i have a i have a one way ticket i'm out of here she said no i'm going to extend this ticket to others you got to be bold enough in your faith in god to know that your your faith can be extended to others without dimming your own light. I want to talk about Hannah. Bold in her faith. I love Hannah. I love Hannah. Hannah couldn't have children. She was provoked. She was provoked for years and years and years and years and years. And one day she decided, I am going to go to the throne room of God and I am going to pray. And I'm going to tell God exactly what I want. I'm going to tell God exactly what I want. I'm going to be specific in what I, I tell God. And you got to be bold in your faith enough to be specific. I mean, yes, God is sovereign. And we, and we, we leave, we leave uh, things to his sovereignty. But she said, you know what, while I'm here, <laughs> while I'm in this posture, I'm just going to tell you what I would desire. And I'm going to leave it up to you to acquiesce to my prayer requests. But I'm still going to ask you, God. She said, listen, God, I need a man child. And God, you know what? I just don't need a man child. I'm going to give him back to you. What a piece of faith. What a bold faith she had to say, God, I want my own gender reveal. And I am going to give him back to you. You have to be bold in your faith to be specific in your prayers and telling God exactly what is it that you want. Plus leaving, leaving his will to be done leaving his will to be executed in your life. But you got to be specific in your prayers. You got to be bold in your prayers. Faith in God will cause you to be bold in your prayers, in your prayer requests. And she was bold. And the Bible said that she got her petition. She got her petition because God saw that this was a woman that he could partner with in the earth love it you got to be bold enough to ask for what you desire you have to be bold enough to ask for what you desire i want to talk about esther for a little bit i love esther oh my god i love esther i love her i love her i love her her the country uh the nation of, of israel was again how many times has this happened in scripture where the people of god was 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 next to be in exile a genocide was just going to destroy them and devour them but there was a woman uh, named Esther who was an orphan came from obscurity came from nothing and she said in Esther 4 verse 14 for if you keep silent at this time relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place this is Mordecai speaking but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. And when Esther heard this, the Bible said that she decided to go on three days of prayer and three days of fasting to seek and to petition the face of God and to ask God for his help. You got to be bold in your faith to turn the plates down and say, God, I want your will. God, I need your direction. God, I want you to show me what, what I'm up against. God, I want your will to be accomplished. God, I need you. You got to turn your plates down. Some of us, we want the hand of God, but we're not willing to sacrifice. Your faith must be bold enough for you to sacrifice, sacrifice everything, sacrifice your food. I mean, and she had food. She had luxury available to her every single day. She had the finest of food presented to her on a table. But she said, no, I'm going to turn this down because the cause of 
Christ is greater than any meal. The cost of the lives of these people, oh my God, is worth it. And so I'm going to turn my plate down. What is what you desire? What is it worth? What is it worth? What are you willing to sacrifice? Your fate must be bold enough for you to sacrifice. And she didn't ju just do it one day. She did it for 72 hours. And based on my reading, this was this was this became her lifestyle. She continued to fast and she continued to pray. Though it's not written there verbatim, but you can read it. You can you can see that her lifestyle changed after these three days. She prayed and she prayed and she sought God. And we know what happened next. The decree was changed, the law was changed. There was an amendment made to the law that, that, that would have caused the Jewish people to die. And the Bible said that as a result, consequently, of this woman as faith in God, they were given weapons to fight against the enemy. Who knows what your prayer and your fasting will do? Who knows what your prayer and fasting will do? It will disarm the enemy. And it will, it will release the goodness and the favor and the strength of God in your life. The scepter was lowered to her over, over uh, three times was noted in scripture. Oh my God, the king, the king kept on lowering, lowering his scepter to her because she was willing to sacrifice the finest of meal. I mean, come on. Because the cause was greater the cause was greater i don't know what you're after i don't know what you're pursuing i don't know what burden may be laid on your heart like esther but you you can either take the easy way out or you can lay prostrate before god in sacrifice and say god i don't know why i'm at the kingdom for such a time as this i don't know why i was chosen to be here but I am here and I can't undo the fact that I'm here. So God, use me. Use me. Use me. Do what you will. I am surrendering everything to you. I'm surrendering this position as queen. I'm, 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 I'm surrendering. I'm surrendering my identity. I am surrendering everything to you, God. I'm surrendering. I'm surrendering my own will and what I would have wanted to do. I'm surrendering it all to you. I am surrendering it all to you. Time will fail me to mention the apostles who prayed for boldness in prison. Who said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Time will fail me to talk of Stephen. Time will fail me to talk of Paul and their great faith in God. Paul said, listen, I believe God that it shall be even as he has told me. Time will not permit me to talk about Philip and his boldness and how he raised his daughters. Time will not permit me to talk about Peter and how he walked on water. Time will not permit me to share of the great faith of Abraham and Sarah and Elijah and Elisha and David and Daniel. Time will not permit me to talk about Deborah. Time will permit me to only talk about this other one person, JL. She had faith in God. She had such faith in God when the enemy came into her house and thought he would find refuge in her house because the enemy thought that he was friends with her husband. She said, uh-huh. You think wrong. You are an enemy to the God of Israel. And no enemy that is an enemy of God is going to be a friend of mine. And the Bible said, <laughs> she gave him milk to drink. And he fell asleep believing that he could find refuge in her house. And the Bible says she took a nail and she hammered his head to the ground and she killed him while Deborah and Barak and the army was in pursuit after this king. 
when when they were on on their journey the bible said that jael met them and said listen you don't have to fight i killed the enemy i killed him come and see for yourself i killed him i want to say this to so many of you and i've been sharing this uh when god gave me this revelation when god showed me not this revelation when god showed me this scripture uh last year and i be i i i, I just became so uh enhammered with it and i just began to fall in love with this unknown character in scripture for so long i didn't even see her but i but i looked at her and i said to myself listen she did the right thing you cannot play games with the enemy you got to be bold enough uh, to hammer his his head in the ground and to kill the enemy while you have a chance and don't give him a chance to wake up because if jail if, if jail had waited for him to wake up he would have gained strength he would have gained strength and perhaps he would have killed her and perhaps he he would have killed those who were in in pursuit of him maybe one or two maybe not all but he probably would have caused some great damage because he, he would have gotten rest. Don't play with the enemy. Don't give him, don't give him any rest in place in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, and in your spirit. Don't give him any rest in place in your house. He doesn't pay any rent. He doesn't pay any mortgage. He doesn't He doesn't pay any bills. You know, in Jamaica, you say, you pay any bills in here? You got to ask, ask the enemy, why are you here? You pay any bills in here? Out. Get out of my house. Get out of my life. You don't pay no bills in here. You don't pay no bills in here. Get out. And that's what she was able to do. She said, you are not going to take territory in my house. I am not going to give the enemy any rest. And then rage war against the people of God. No, not on my watch. Not on my watch. You got to be bold in your faith like David and cut Goliath's head off and like Jael nail his head to the ground don't give the enemy not even an inch because if you give him an inch he will take a mile and he will take a mile he will take over I'm not asking you I am telling you you start to feed yourself one negativity oh my goodness it becomes your speech life and then it becomes a way that you walk out your life just in total negativity you give the enemy an inch he will he will take over he will conquer you he will conquer the things that you see the the things that you smell the things that you hear the things that you feel i am telling you so jayla said not in my house not in my house a matter of fact you came to the right house because I am going to destroy you once and for all. That nobody else is going to have to fight you. I am going to. My children will have to fight you. My, my husband will have to fight you. Nobody will have to fight you. Because I am going to fight you myself. I can, I, can, I can just picture it in my mind. I can just picture this whole thing in my mind. When that enemy started to snore. <laughs> when he oh my god when he was when he was in that deep sleep and he don't know where he is you know those deep sleep you, th you think you're you're, <laughs> you're in bed but 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 you think you're somewhere else that deep sleep that <laughs> <laughs> and in Jamaica, they say they, 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 they saw they, they sign. <laughs> they saw. <laughs> I'm Jamaican people are funny. You know what I mean? They, 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 they just sign the whole place down. <laughs> and some some people some people have gears in their snores. Oh my god! <laughs> Sound like a truck. Sometimes you can hear them. <laughs> She waited until he was in a deep sleep, snoring, thinking he was safe. And hammered the nail in his head, man. I said, there's no return for you. you, 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 you we, we have to be so bold and tell the enemy, enemy, I'm not playing with you. I am not playing with you. Especially in this hour, I'm not playing with you. You are wicked, evil. You, listen. I am not playing with you. Away with you. 
take away with you. So you got to be bold in your faith. That when the enemy comes in, you destroy him the first time. Don't be empathetic to the enemy. Because I'm telling you, he comes in subtle at first. But once you give him room, he's going to forget your empathy. And he's going to take over. And he's going to destroy you. Be bold enough to destroy him like JL did. We'll talk soon, everybody. May the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his great face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and grant you his peace that passes all understanding. I pray that you are blessed and I pray that this will cause you to go out and to just be bold in your faith. God bless you in Jesus' name.